we're gonna be talking about the different options for maintenance mode. And there's three different options. For this video, we're gonna break into two separate pieces. The first half of this video, we'll be talking about those three different options. In the second half of this video, we're gonna jump into vCenter and put a host in maintenance mode. So let's start out by talking about full data migration. We're taking all the data that's on one host and copying over to another host. So our administrator comes along and says, I wanna put that last host in maintenance mode. At that point, the host performs a pre-check to make sure, is everything okay? Can I put this host in maintenance mode with a full data migration? Once those pre-checks complete, we kick off a resync because we have to move all that data from one host over to another host. Once that resync completes, we then cut over, or our VM says, I'm gonna start using this component over here, and that host goes into maintenance mode. A couple things that you should be aware about if you're choosing full data migration. And the first is, how many nodes do we have in the environment? So in this example, we've got a RAID 1 FTT of 1 VM, which requires a minimum of 3 to 6 I hosts. If we only have 3 to 6 I hosts, full data migration isn't an option for us. But that's where our next maintenance mode option comes into play with our ensure accessibility. In this example, we have four nodes, so we can take away that host resource, that host storage capacity, and put it on another host. But since we're taking away that storage capacity, do we have enough free space in the environment to put those other objects? So something to keep an eye on before you choose this option is how much free space do you have? And the last one is how much time is it going to take to move from all the objects from one host over to another host? So if this last host had 10 terabytes worth of data on it, and we're choosing full data migration, how long would it take to move 10 terabytes over to another host? So it's something to keep in mind for our maintenance window. Let's talk about our next option, which is ensure accessibility. Our ensure accessibility option says, can we take away this resource and still have access to our objects. In this case, we've got a RAID 1 FTT of 1 VM that can tolerate a single failure. Now, when we use the word failure, that could be a controller failure, that can be a disk failure, or that could be putting a host in maintenance mode because we're taking that resource away from it. And if you think back to our storage policy video, I said that all of our components for us to have availability had to be above that 50% watermark. So if I take away this node, I still have component one, I still have component two, for 66% availability. Our administrator comes along and says, I want to put this host in maintenance mode. We perform those same pre-checks, making sure we still have access to those objects. Once we've completed those pre-checks, we put the host in maintenance mode, and our component, it changes health states. So I'm going to talk about the different kind of object states. We've got healthy, which means everything is compliant with our storage policy, and we can access it. We have absent. Absent is the state that this component just went into. And that's true for a data component or a witness component. But Absent says this component has gone away and vSAN is hoping that it comes back. In this case, we put our host in maintenance mode. We know that the resource has gone away, the SXI host has gone away, which means the component has gone away. But vSAN is expecting it, it to come back. We then have degraded. Degraded, I like to think of as something died in the environment. Add a controller that died or a disk that died. Something failed and it notified vSAN. We just had a disk failure all the components on this disk have now failed. Let's go and kick off a resync and rebuild those components somewhere else in the environment. Those are our three object states. Once you put that host in maintenance mode, our witness component goes into an absent state. Because it's no longer available, our object is in a reduced availability state because we're missing that one component. And this is where something you should keep in the back of your mind because we've just cashed in our get out of jail free card. We've used our one failure in the environment. Let's say we have another failure in the environment. Let's say a disk fails on host two. In that case, we have what we call a double fault because we suffered more failures than we're designed to tolerate. And since we had a disk failure, our best course of action would be to bring host three out of maintenance mode to bring us above that 50% watermark. You might be thinking, why would I choose ensure accessibility versus full data migration? And it might depend on the number of nodes we have in the environment. In this case, we've got a RAID 1 FTT of 1 VM, which requires a minimum of three ASIC I hosts. Since we just have those three nodes, we don't have a place to put that data if we're choosing full data migration. And the second reason, which I think is a little bit more of the important reason, is how long is that maintenance window? Even if we have 10 E6I hosts, if that maintenance window is only five minutes in length, is it worth the time it takes to copy over 10 terabytes worth of data to do a five minute maintenance window? In that case, we may choose to accept the risk of, okay, we could have this double fault situation, knowing that within a couple minutes, I can bring that host out and I'm willing to accept the risk. And this is actually VMware's recommended option if we know the maintenance is gonna be less than 60 minutes. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. 
So let's go through a couple more examples with ensure accessibility before we move on to our node data migration option. For our next example, we've got a four node cluster. We determine that ensure accessibility is our best option. Our administrator comes along, puts the host in maintenance mode. We perform our pre-check. We put that witness component in an absent state, causing our object to be in a reduced availability state. But while that host is sitting there in that maintenance mode, we're doing whatever we're working on. vSAN starts off a timer. It starts off a 60 minute timer that says, if this host does not come back within 60 minutes, I'm gonna kick off a resync. I'm gonna resync that data over to that fourth host that's sitting there waiting for it. Let's say it's been uh, two hours or four hours. Host four comes back online. It says, oh, I see you've already put this data on another host. We don't need this component now. That's okay, we've already cut over to it. No big deal. I wanna take this example just a little bit further. So we've got our host four maintenance mode and that 60 minute timer lapses. vSAN triggers a resync and starts copying that data over to host one. But let's say at the 65 minute mark, host four comes back online. It says, hey, I'm here, I'm available. vSAN has a decision point to make. Is it faster for me to resync the data to host one, that two terabytes worth of data, or would it be faster for me to catch up whatever component one on host four missed? Let's say it was 10, 10 gigs worth of data that it missed. Well, vSAN would say, it's much faster for me to update 10 gigs versus having to resync two terabytes. And so we would delete the component one on host one and catch up the component one on host four. Okay, so now we've talked about ensure accessibility. Let's talk about our no data migration. Our no data migration option just puts the host in maintenance mode, doesn't do any checks whatsoever. It just does it. It doesn't see, are we still gonna have access to this object or not? And then after that, it performs exactly like our ensure accessibility option with that 60 minute timer saying, okay, this timer has elapsed. I'm gonna resync the data over to another host. You might be thinking, why don't we just always use no data migration? And that's because it doesn't check our objects. It doesn't see what is the impact of this action on these objects. So let's go back to our configuration from our storage policy video. In that video, we had a VM with a RAID 5 VMDK. That was our OS. We had one with a RAID 1 policy. That was our application drive. We had a RAID 0. That was our scratch space. So if we said, I want host 4, I want you just to go into main mode and not do any pre-checks whatsoever. Our RAID 5 object would be OK, and our RAID 1 object would be OK but our RAID 0 object would not be okay because that's the only copy of our data. If we had used the ensure accessibility option, it, we would have done a resync and moved that data over to another host and then put the host in maintenance mode. But as a result, our scratch disk, well, we don't have access to it anymore. After that 60 minute timer elapsed, that RAID 5 object would remain in a reduced availability state because we have the minimum of 46 i host for that policy. Our RAID 1 policy though, that would kick off a resync and rebuild that missing data on another host. But for our RAID 0 policy, the only way to get that data back would be either restore from backup or take that host out of maintenance mode. We typically reserve the no data migration option for support in case we need to force something to happen in the environment. We're having some kind of outage situation or if we're doing an entire cluster shutdown. And we'll talk about how to go through an entire cluster shutdown in a future video. So now at this point, we've done a lot of talking about slides. Let's jump into our vCenter and let's actually put our host in maintenance mode. We're gonna walk through two different ways we can put our host in maintenance mode. The first is doing a data pre-check. This is a what if simulator. What if I did this action? And the second one is just right clicking on our host and choosing one of our three options and clicking on okay. For our data pre-check, we initially introduced this with 6.7 U1 and then later refined it with 6.7 U3. And if we click on our cluster, click on monitor, we can go down to our data pre-check. I'm gonna click on the drop down for select object. And let's say we wanna put host three into maintenance mode. We can then choose which option we want to use, whether that's full data migration, ensure accessibility, or no data migration. We can then click on the pre-check button. And this will tell us what's going to be the impact of choosing this option. We can see we've got one VM that will be impacted. This is our storage policy VM. This is the VM that we we're talking about earlier with the RAID 5 policy, the RAID 1 policy, and the RAID 0 policy. I'll then click on the cluster capacity tab. And this will tell us what is the impact of choosing this maintenance mode option. If we did full data migration, it would say, well, now we're taking up these additional resources or this additional storage in the environment. I'm then gonna click on predictive health. With predictive health, this tells us what is gonna be the health of our objects. I'm gonna click on our vSAN object health. We can see we've got one object that'll be in a reduced availability state with no rebuild. And that no rebuild says once that 60 minute timer elapses, we can't kick off a resync because we can't put that data on another host. If we had a five node environment, then we could put that out there. Once we've taken a look at all the options, we can do the enter maintenance mode in the upper right hand side. 
From here, we can view our settings and click on OK. Then take our host out of maintenance mode. I'll just right click on the host, go down to maintenance mode and click on exit maintenance mode. Let's do one more example before we go to that other method I was talking about. This time we're gonna choose host two, do no data migration and click on pre-check. We can see we've got a little bit different results. If you look at that very first object, we can see it's gonna go into an inaccessible state, meaning we don't have access to that data. We're not gonna be moving that component over to another host to make sure we still have accessibility to it. If I click on our predictive health, we can see we've got one object that'll be inaccessible and six objects that'll be reduced availability. Okay, so let's switch gears and let's talk about that other way to put our host in maintenance mode, or at least for this video before we wrap up. I'm gonna right click on host four this time, choose maintenance mode, enter maintenance mode. This allows us to choose one of those three options. And if we did wanna do that data pre-check, we can click on that in the bottom right-hand corner. From there, I'll click on okay. Once that host enters maintenance mode, we can click on virtual objects and see what was the impact of making that change. We can see we've got two disks that are in reduced availability state, our RAID 5 disk and our RAID 1 disk. One last thing, and then we'll wrap up this video, is I've been talking about that 60 minute timer. How do we change that timer? So if I click on our vSAN cluster, click on configure, and then go down to services, we can then go to our advanced options. And on the right-hand side, we can click on the edit button, where we can see we've got our object repair timer. Now it allows us to change that 60 minute timer if there is a need to change that timer. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. We start off with our full data migration option. We would copy all of the data from one host and copy it to another host in the environment, making the assumption that we have more nodes than the minimum required. We then talked about our ensure accessibility option, which says, can I take away this host and still have access to our objects? Our third option was our no data migration option, where the host just went into maintenance mode and didn't do any pre-checks. From there, we jumped into vCenter, we talked about our data pre-check, and then we talked about how to put our host in maintenance mode. I hope you found this video informative and I'd like to thank you for watching.